Libra. I finally made it. It felt so good to take my first steps on shore. I was expecting that I was going to fall over as soon as I stepped onto the dock, but actually I just stepped onto the dock, which was kind of disappointing because I wanted to have some sort of big moment where I was like, oh yeah, sorry, I've just been at sea and I'm falling over now. No, no, I'm not drunk, I'm a sailor, but that didn't. So before I left the States, I didn't really look into the clearing in formalities of Puerto Rico, so I had no idea that if you come from the States, you don't actually have to clear in. So I went to go clear in. <laughs> the little immigration office is at the airport, which is about a 20 minute walk. I got in there and it's the tiniest airport in the world. And there's this little door on the side and you open it and this blast of cold air conditioned air hits you and you're just like, oh my God, this feels amazing. And there was this immigration officer who I love. I wish I remembered her name, but I got in and she was like, so where did you come from? And I said, North Carolina. And she was like, no, no, where did you sail from? And I was like, North Carolina. And she goes, why are you here? And I was like, well, uh, I'm clearing in. And she was like, you don't have to clear in. This is a US state. And I was like, oh, well, shit. <laughs> but she was super nice. We sat down together and she started writing me a list of all the things I should do in Culebra. And she was like, oh, you know, this is Easter weekend. And I was like, what? Easter weekend is apparently the second biggest weekend in Culebra, second only to New Year's. And everyone from Puerto Rico comes over because I had heard Culebra was this tiny, sleepy little town. And I got there and there were boats everywhere and people everywhere. Holy shit, this place is ridiculous. But that was because I hit it exactly on that weekend. So while we were talking, this other couple came in to clear and she was like, um, sorry, I can only have one person in here at a time. You're going to have to wait outside. And they left and she was like, okay, so if you want to go to the supermarket, and I was like, you are awesome. So I decided to embrace the fact that this was the busy, crazy weekend. And I went out and there was all this live music and there was this bomba band playing. They had five or six drums and three guys. One guy was playing three drums at once. Bamba, I know it comes from Africa, but Puerto Ricans have accepted it as their traditional music and dance. And so I went to the bar and I was like, oh, well, a good way to make friends is by dancing. So I started dancing and kind of watching what the girls were doing and trying to do what they were doing. <laughs> I'm not doing it right, who cares? And I ended up getting adopted by this group of Puerto Rican girls who they were teaching me how to do all the moves. And she was like, hold your shoulders down and now shake at the drums. And I was like, I don't know if I'm comfortable doing that. <laughs> it was so fun. One of the sad things about Culebra is how hard it was hit by the hurricane. How little aid they were given from the US. So hurricane hit <clears throat> 2017. Culebra has power and water lines that go underwater from mainland Puerto Rico to the island. I actually walked on the beach where you can see the giant power line coming in out of the water. They had just gotten power back from the mainland three months before I arrived, which means that they were running on backup generators for over a year. One of the side effects of this was that they weren't able to fully run their sewage treatment plant on reduced power, so they were pumping partially untreated sewage into the water. It wasn't their fault, there was nothing we could do about it. But this killed off almost all the coral around the whole island. It was all covered in this kind of like a white slime. It was just dead. And there is a group of people trying to get a sea grant to restore the coral population. It's beautiful to see how much the people of the island have come together to save the environment that they love. So on a brighter note, Culebra is not the greatest place in the world to reprovision because they don't have a ton of stuff, but they do have a decent market with freshies, and for that I was very pleased. So I've done some reprovisioning, and check out how crazy this produce is. It's enormous. <laughs> it's so nuts, and look. Zucchini. <laughs> this is like an entire meal for me. That I don't even know. I don't even know what to do. But this is all there was. I didn't buy it just because it was enormous or slightly phallic. More than slightly. Okay, let's be real. Extremely. Um, this was my only option. This carrot could feed a family of four. <laughs> so my darling friend, as a gift, gave me a bunch of canned food that he got drunk one night and 
took the labels off, which is what you are supposed to do on a boat, but he decided to creatively label the cans um, with a, a description of what he thought was inside of it. This one is called Spicy, so I'm going to open it and see what we get. It's sauerkraut. <laughs> Sauerkraut's not spicy. Now I have to eat an entire can of kraut. <laughs> I do love kraut. I'm actually pretty pleased about this. So while Calabre isn't the best place necessarily to get groceries, it's a great place, however, to get water. Water is 25 cents a gallon, which is amazing. So I filled up my tanks there. I also filled up on more diesel. On the trip over, my hatch and my anchor chain locker both leaked and the entire V-berth was flooded with salt water. It's ridiculous. So I did a laundry run with two other sailors I met in the bay. Sheets. I just had this pile of laundry and it had been stewing its own salt water disgustingness for the past week and a half. I've never been that excited to do laundry in my life. I was like, this is the best day ever! And him and the other women who were with me were like, mm -hmm solo sailor they really are weird and I was like you guys don't understand laundry like <laughs> it was awesome after about four or five days in Culebra I got tired of being in the same place oh the first couple days I was resting except for the night that I had partied until sunrise not very restful so I left and headed for St. John it wasn't that windy that day but it worked out because I could motor sail and pinch a little bit higher so even though motor sailing, which I really dislike, the good news is that today is one of the days that my tiller pilot works, which is really awesome because there's not enough wind for the wind vane to do its thing, and I don't feel like being on the helm for 10 hours. I'm pretty stoked about that. By work, I mean I couldn't leave it for more than 20 minutes and expect it to steer a straight course, but that's plenty of time for me. All of the things that people have said about easting is all true. I just tried to set my jib because I was like, I'm a sailboat, I'm gonna sail east, I don't care, I'll just tack, I'll go really fast. Not true. There's no way I would go anywhere, so I'm just motor sailing with the main up, and it's fine. So stoked to be underway again. Um, I was totally stagnating in Calabria Sea, also eating my favorite little baby corns from the cockpit. It's amazing. This is really good. I made it into Rendezvous Bay that evening, which is this absolutely beautiful, pretty much no other boats place, and I spent a couple days there. I liked it so much. It had really great snorkeling. I could just jump off my boat and swim right over to the reef, and no other boats anchored there past four o'clock. I was the only one there, so I had the sunsets and the sunrises to myself. As the sun is sinking low and the evening's tucked in low On the rise of my true love I see She ain't fancy, she ain't fine While her fingers number only nine She's the belle of the ball of insurgency I 
thank you guys for watching. I had a lot of fun putting together my little music video of the dive footage that I took in St. John's. I recorded that song on my computer with this cool little recorder that my dad gave me for my birthday one year. I'm thinking of maybe doing more covers as background music. We'll see. Also, I have a bonus video for you guys this week. A couple of you have asked to see a tour of my boat, which I think is totally valid. So I've included it as a separate little episode. If you like what you see and want to keep seeing more, it helps me if you subscribe. That would be really cool. Also, um, check out the description below for my website where I post blogs every week. And there's also a link to my Instagram account where I post photos every day or two of sort of daily life aboard the boat. So thank you guys for being awesome and being into what I'm doing. It is helping me do what I like to do, which is sail and make videos, apparently. <laughs>